All right, guys, it's time for episode five of the Book of Boba Fett. And this one is titled The Return of the Mandalorian. And just like we got that hint at the end of the last episode, the Mandalorian is not only in this episode, he is front and center from end to end. This is an episode that doesn't even feature Boba Fett. But it's okay because it's got Din Djarin in it. And it opens with a meat plant. And inside this meat plant, the aliens are prepping and cutting and preparing different meat from said animals. And behind the plastic door, we see a shadow. And it's the Mandalorian. He comes in and he walks through the entire plant looking, surveying. He's come in to collect the bounty of an alien. Now, before the fight ensues, he tells the alien, he can bring him in warm, or he can bring him in cold. Now, as usual, that doesn't work very well to the uh, bounty's advantage. A fight ensues, and man, Din Djarin, takes them all on and they get a few licks in as well but his worst wound comes from himself as he wields the dark saber and burns his leg with it but as I mentioned he does prevail and he ends up taking the head of his bounty and putting it in a bag and coming out now he's aboard some big space ring and he limps into town and drops the head off and collects his info and when he leaves you see him going through the streets using his infrared vision from his helmet to find those hidden directions to where he can go through the city and find the secret tunnels leading to where the other Mandalorians are. There we see the armor and Paz Vizsla, the large Mandalorian from season one of the Mandalorian show. She asks him what weapon could have caused such a wound as he shows them the Darksaber. Now, as mentioned, the Darksaber is held by the Mandalorian who is wanted in combat. And remember, last season he did win it in combat against Moff Gideon. She later tells him, though, that the spear that he has must be forged into a weapon. She also tells him the story of Bo Katan and how she and her house lost their way and it's one of the things that caused Mandalore to fall. We see brief flashbacks to the great purge of Mandalore and the night of a thousand tears as Imperial TIE bombers bomb the cities and the planet of Mandalore. Din then asks that she forge some armor for Grogu that lets us know that sometime within the Mandalorian we will be seeing Grogu again. Later on during some combat training he notes that he cannot properly use the Darksaber. She tells him that's because it gets heavier with each move because as she puts it he's fighting against the blade. Visla shows up and he feels it belongs to him as his ancestor was the one that created it and he challenges Mando to a duel. Mando wins the duel and she does ask Din if he's ever removed his helmet. After a brief pause he does confess and she lets him know that he is no longer a Mandalorian as it is their way to never show their face. 
He asks what he can do in order to atone. She says he must go into the living waters beneath the mines of Mandalore. This is great because this sets up what should be the majority of the plot for season three of The Mandalorian. He leaves on a transport headed to Tatooine, which arrives in Mos Eisley. He meets back up with Pelimato, the uh, mechanic in one of the hangars. He was told that he would get a ship much like the Razor Crest. Instead, she has an old Republic starfighter. After some back and forth and some debate, he helps her rebuild it and add some modifications, a lot of modifications to be exact, and he goes and tests it out. Man, does it go. He actually runs past part of the pod race course that we saw in episode one, and there's a lot of fan service in this episode. And I'm glad. Most of it's right there in your face. Most of it's subtle. But that's okay. Fan service is not a bad thing if used right. Then he leaves the planet surface in the ship. Takes it into space. He passes, he passes a transport cruiser. And runs into a couple of X-Wings. But before any capture could ensue. He hits a switch, and he flies off exceedingly fast. Whatever modifications they've made into this ship, it's going to come out to be... It's going to turn out to be one wonderful thing. I can't wait to see more of it. Now he does head back to the surface, where he's told that he had a friend that had been asking about him. He asked what friend, and from above we hear Finnick Shan. She comes down to join him, and she hands him some money, offers him a job, and he asks, what's the bounty? She says, no bounty. We need muscle. He hands the money back, referring to Boba Fett, saying, tell him it's on the house. But first, he has to pay a visit to a little friend. This is by far the best episode of Boba Fett that we've had. And as I've said previously, we are really building to something. So I cannot wait for episode six to see what's next. Make sure that you join me next week for the recap of episode six. As always, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you like and didn't like. Let me know who your favorite Star Wars character is. Stay positive, stay blessed, I will see you again soon.